Hello everyone, Pursuit here, just doing an intro into what is Crash Landing, the mod for Minecraft. Um, just giving some quick tips on how to play the game because you get started on this and you really don't know what's going on right off the bat. The book kind of tells you but it doesn't give you the small pointers about how the basics have been changed from a regular game. So if you want to hang here with me for just a little bit I will walk you through a few pointers here on exactly um, some of the changes that might be different from playing a regular Minecraft and some modded Minecraft um, and it will hopefully get, help you get started with crash landing a little bit easier. First of all um, something you'll want to do, it tells you up here and it tells you when you first come in, is you need to turn on the questing. So type in h slash hqm quest to activate it and questing is enabled. It gives you an extra book that you don't need. Um, secondly, you'll want to do um, with the special mobs, uh, it can be very difficult to survive if you do not turn off mob griefing. So, type it in here as I am typing it in and hopefully I spell it right. I seem to always spell it wrong. So, rule, game rule, mob griefing, that's a capital G in there, uh, faults. Um, and that will keep the special mobs, especially the creepers, because um, they're the ones that explode from destroying all of your base because they will blow up and destroy your important stuff and they will also blow up by being shot by other mobs and they will blow up by stepping in this which will just totally wreck everything. So, let's take a look at the few of the other things you should keep in mind. With this questing system, you right click with the book and it tells you about the crash landing. Um, and you hear in the background this little assistant talking that will help you get through stuff, give you rewards for completing whatnot. Um, so you crashed on this planet um, and there are uh, several different tasks it wants you to complete. Um, this has four quests available right now, two of them unlocked, zero completed. Um, two available for completion. Um, you can do this multiplayer if you set up a party. Um, and I can only die once. Um, it says you have an infinite amount of lives. Um, you don't. Um, so if you open this up, click on it, that one first, and then open it up. Um, and it teaches you how to play the game as you go along. So the first part, gathering supplies. So you click on this and you say, uh, the detach engine, watch out for it, it's leaking fuel, um, and it asks you to collect two of these fluid transposers. And it tells you where some supplies are in the chests over there, um, and then it says it'll give you some rewards for completing the tasks, and it will manually detect them. So, um, these chests do have a little bit of supplies, but not a whole lot, and the main stuff you're going to want is... Um, from, from completing quests. You really can't go any further in this if you don't complete the quests. So, first off I'm going to grab this uh, what's it called? It's called a Crescent Hammer from Thermal Expansion. Um, and for those who played modded Minecraft before, it's not too difficult to use. Just shift and right click and you will remove those. Um, and then so you've got them in your inventory now, so you bring the book back out and it, and it detected them automatically. You didn't have to click the manual detect. Um, and now that we've completed that, you can do the claim reward. So you claim the reward, it gives you a bunch of water and a camel pack. Now this camel pack is going to be necessary for you to survive this game. So I got a bunch of cold water down here. Let's just put the cold water up here, the regular water. Let's just throw some on my back. Um, the cold water is for drinking. The normal water you can drink or you can put it in your camel pack. Uh, you can fill this thing all the way up with four bottles and it will slowly let you drink those. It gives you the bottles back and then you can go on to the next quest. Um, right click to back out and the first thing we should look at here really is whether you want to go the easy route or the hard route. The easy route 
you only have to spend one dust. So it's making it really easy to get it. Um, there's a sync constructor right here, which isn't showing up on my screen. Um, and that will allow you to basically have more lives if you use power. Um, you can eventually get this stuff also as you play the game, but this is making it a lot easier to get some basic resources and not die. Um, so as you see, like an oak sapling you can get some apples from. Um, you got some other stuff, some basic food to start with. The energy cell to power the constructor. Some more ammo. Um, the hard route, on the other hand, still just turn in one dust. They're just trying to get you to make a decision here. Um, you get a birch sapling and a spruce sapling. Um, you do not get anything, neither of those trees produce fruit. fruit. Um, you get a little bit of bone meal and some needle gun ammo. So, you know, that's a pretty simple task. You just run out here, grab a piece of dust, and boom. There you go. You've got the dust. And I'm going to choose... Um, I don't know that it really matters which one I choose, because I'm not actually going to play this through. Let's just choose the easy route, because that'll show us more stuff. So, manual submit. Um, I've actually done the hard route the times I've played before, but... Um, just trying to demonstrate some stuff here. So, the claim your reward will give you all these items here. So you notice they all just popped into my inventory. Um, let's look around a little bit now that we've got a few of the basic supplies because um, it's hot out here. Dust is going to be the main thing you collect in this game and the rewards. Um, and every it leads towards everything else. So we've got some water leaking out over here. Regular sources like this one that's coming out of your engine core here are going to be salt water. If you pick up that water source using a bucket, um, which you can make after you get a little bit of iron, uh, you can supposedly go down deeper. Let's just dig down here a little bit. And your map over there says 48. Um, you will be able to move these off my. You'll be able to make dirty water, um, and that you can put in a furnace and cook up to make clean water. So an easy, quick way to get water in the beginning of the game is probably going to be do this and throw it in a furnace, and uh, a lot easier than using that machine that you'll probably run out of energy on. If you plop this down. Um, you click on it so it acknowledges you. It will hurt you, but it won't kill you. Now, it doesn't have any power yet, so we have to put down some power. And then we have to turn on the power. So, you will want to put it on orange. Yeah, see, it's taking power out right now. And this will slowly make a copy of me. And this is the only way to get lives in this game, uh, as far as I know at this, at this time, is to make a copy of yourself and every time you die you will come back to this location and use another one of these bodies and you have to construct another one before you die again or you will lose and you could make multiple copies of these later in the game um, there's different things you can build uh, but it takes a long time to get to that point um, but the basics here so you know you start out with a little bit of ammo you've got this needle gun which isn't all that powerful um, but it's handy because it means that you don't have to manually hit people. You use your hunger up when you're actually punching the bad guys. When you're shooting the gun, you're not using your hunger up. And your hunger is going to drop really fast. Uh, so we're taking the easy mode, so it's not going to be quite as bad. We gave us more ammo, gave us extra stuff to work with. Um, so, you know, that's really the basics. I don't know how much I want to go into. I just wanted to show how to start off the um, uh, quest stuff that you can collect, uh, turn in some bone meal. You know, I, we can actually do that quest right now because we already have water. I think they meant you to go collect some stuff because uh, you're supposed to go sifting. Um, well, yeah, let's go ahead and show the sifting. So we have the sifter. Let's just grab all this stuff. Um, so you put the sifter down and you take that piece of we already turned one of them in. Let's just go grab another one. You take the dust, you right click on here, and then you right click until it disappears, and it will drop some random supplies. So, as you notice, we did get a piece of another piece of bone meal, and we got some pulverized aluminum. Um, and I think the quest wanted another piece of dust to submit, so we have to go get one more piece. Uh, which still, it's not really hard to get the first few pieces. Um, 
but it's part of the whole questing system. So we'll submit this. Um, we still have some water that we can use up. Um, and I don't think this is how to use water. It just makes you use up uh, in a bottle of water. I do essential survival. Okay, so it asks you to just turn in some water. Um, so we haven't used up what we had. If you wait too long and use up all your water, this is a little more difficult to complete. So then we can claim the reward. Some dirt, some bone meal, some water, and it gives you more tasks. Now every time you complete uh, a task, it may, may or may not unlock new tasks, usually give you rewards. There can be multiple levels of these. I think all the ones I've done so far only have one level, but there can be multiple levels that won't show up until after you complete them. Um, the sapling one, uh, this one's kind of annoying to get to, but um, there's some tools ones here. This one will have multiple levels you have to complete before you get the rewards. Um, but the questing system, if you put something down and you take out this quest delivery system, you put it down. Now like for the water one, and I'm not going to have a bunch of saplings here. Actually I will. Let's just cheat them in because I don't want to go grow them. I don't want to make you watch that either. So let's go game mode uh, creative. Creative. No, 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 no. Creative. I'm a terrible speller and a terrible typer, so, you know, that's just how it is. And, you know, that's great timing because these guys would be killing me right now if I was in regular game mode. Because uh, it is nighttime now, and it gets nasty around here at night. But I'm in creative mode now, so they don't even care that I'm here. Um, if you really wanted to make sure... <laughs> oh, I just broke them. I couldn't put them in front of the door. But if you really wanted to make sure you were going to survive, you would want to either uh, stack some dirt out there or stack some of these glass blocks in front of the entrance um, or you are going to be toast. I broke a hole in the floor too. Oh well. Um, but let me show you how the questing system works. So this thing right here, we need to power it with some leadstone flux and then we will put, I think it's eight trees. Is that what it, did it tell us or is that just what I'm remembering? Anyways, uh, make sure you set this up to work properly. Let's turn off all of the things to it and let's turn the questing book to the proper location. So we want to select a task. Whenever you use the QDS system, you want to select a task. And once you've selected the task, wow, see that that's why you want your mob griefing off, because that would have blown a hole in something we didn't want. Hey, Mr. Creeper, can we be friends? We good? Okay, you don't kill me, I won't kill you, okay? At least not yet. So, as I was saying before I got interrupted, um, you do the select task, and then you right-click on the QDS system, and it will say, okay, now look up above it says, sapping the saplings. So, we've set it up to, to do the saplings. Anyways, we throw the saplings in here. Maybe I have to flick this. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I've got it right. Okay, so it is eating up these trees. And you're noticing it's not, as it's, soon as it gets to here, it gets rid of it because it's actually dumping it into this. See, 50, 60% completed, 70%. Um, look like I'll probably, there are 10, so put two more in there. And that gets me 100%. It gave me some extra sticks. And this turns off as soon as it is completed. So if we go back to the questing, it says it's completed. It says you get some extra water out of this and we're all happy and good. Now something you need to remember is once you do this, this thing will still take anything that dumps into it. So don't leave it running, pick it up, disconnect it, whatever you need to do when the system's done because if I throw some more trees in here, it's just all gonna get dumped into that system and nothing you, nothing you can do about it, it's gone uh, once it gets dumped in. You can do one of two things, you can either turn this off again, which once you start dumping the trees back in again, um, they will not get dumped. See, you got 200 there. Let's just do a total of 8. There's a purpose for that. Um, so you can either turn it off or I recommend, so you don't have to worry about it, just shift, right-clicking, or 
maybe it's just, oh, it's actually breaking it, but I'm in creative mode, so it's going to destroy it. So, I don't care, I don't need it anymore. For you, though, um, just pound it with your fist till it breaks, but I broke it anyways, don't worry about it. I don't want to go out of creative mode right now, because there's monsters all over who would kill me. So, what it was trying to teach me here was, okay, you stick trees in here, you get sticks, um, and you've got some water there, you throw in a bottle here, and you swip, switch this around, and it turns that water into a bottle of water, and you can put it inside of your camel pack. And recharge that. Because this will constantly drain, you can use those, you can use the cold water to do immediate uh, fixes for your temperature, because your temperature, uh, as you see down here, it's 36.96 if you get too close to heat, uh, fire, um, your furnace, some electrical stuff. Uh, one additional thing you'll want to note about building tools in um, crash landing is that, for instance, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If you, all tools that you build in this will like for instance if you build a wooden hoe you'll notice that the durability is one and one all tools and weapons that you build with the normal um, builds will only have one durability so like if you were to build a an iron sword it only has a durability of one and one so you really can't use them um, what you want to do instead is build things using uh, Tinker's construct um, and so you'll need to get patterns which can be created like that. Make a few more here. Um, so you'll just want to build several of these little pattern things. Uh, if any of you have used it will know. And then you'll want to build uh, yourself a part builder. That'll give you the book to get started with that stuff. You'll want to build yourself a crafty bench to turn into a tool station. You'll also want to get a stencil table and you'll want to get yourself uh, possibly to store it with. You don't need this to start off but it's good to have. You'll want to get yourself a pattern chest um, and using all of these items you can then be able to build yourself tools um, out of Tinker's Construct stuff. So, you know, throw all these down, get building. It's not too expensive. You'll have to get yourself a tree um, grown, uh, but then you'll be able to put all these patterns in here and pick out the things that you'll want. Um, take each of these parts, create the pattern for them. Like, let's say, for instance, you wanted to build the pan, which can be used as a weapon or for cooking, um, or any of these. Just build yourself the pattern that you want, um, like say you wanted to get a shovel which is really important for starting to dig with um, get yourself a shovel head and to this and I don't think you can build with wood right off you, know, you can build with wood right off which is you probably use bone um, but I don't have any bone on me at the moment so we'll just show you with this and you'll build yourself a tool and this tool will have more durability. He has a durability of 59 versus the one you would get. Um, bone is better and you'll have lots of bone to start with, so you probably want to start with the bone. Um, and you can repair these tools in your just your normal player inventory. And you'll want to start off, one I found was the most helpful was the Maddock, um, because you can use it for, uh, it takes both the axe head and the shovel head, but you can use it to for farming um, in place of a hoe and you can use it for an axe and you probably want to build a separate shovel though if you build this out of bone it'll be even a little faster um, but it's going to be a lot more durable than building anything out of the regular buildings, building tools that Minecraft has because they've disabled that. And look, there's me, I'm ready so when I die again um, all will be well with the world so you know what, let's try something. Let's say that I had made up enough dirt, because dirt's the only block here that I have that I want to try and fill in with. 
let's say that I had filled this in, and obviously you wouldn't be using dirt. Um, but we'd filled this in. Um, and this guy, we gotta kill this guy before he messes with us. Let's try out our gun. That's pretty quick. You see that? A lot better than trying to punch him. Okay, I'm back in survival mode. If I, let's show you on this gun, if I use up So it's like 12 shots. Um, you can refill those and you get like twice as many needle shots as you use for the arrows that you put into it, so it's, I think it's worth it. Um, especially for beginner stuff. Everybody's dying out there, as you can hear the sun's come up. Well, maybe it's not the sun's come up yet. Maybe they stepped in the fire. The sun will be up soon anyways though. Um, but I wanted to show you what happens if I die. So. Let's just say, okay, I was trying to be prepared. I put some water in my pack here. I thought I was all good. Um, my hunger, hunger is going to be an issue too. You need to pay attention. Hold shift button to look at these. Your hunger will drop really fast. Um, but you can refill it by getting different foods. And notice it says, diminishing returns start after eating any food 36 more times. You have to continually eat different foods. Um, they will reset, but... Oh man, it's noisy out there. Let's let him finish dying and then I'll finish explaining that. Because I'm going to go out there and die in a minute too. To show you how death works. You going to die already? Come on. Enough? Just burn up. Thank you. This is a great corner by the way to collect some supplies. Um, which is what you need to do every day if you want to make it through this, because you need these tools for stuff. Um, but I was trying to explain the food. You need to eat different foods all the time. Uh, but I'm going to show you how this shell constructor works. Um, this, with, along with the sink thing. So, we've actually used up, um, like, already used up more than half of it used up quite a bit anyways though so you're gonna have to find a way of recharging this uh, but that's another day another story so let's show you what happens though if I die so let's say I thought I was ready I'm gonna go out here and I close my door behind me because I'm responsible and I'm just wandering around oh let me see where is everybody oh guess what I wasn't paying attention I died if you had that on hard mode and you did not have this cell, this shell constructor, you would be game over. And I'll show you what game over looks like in just a minute. Um, but I had an extra shell here, so it saved me. Um, my stuff is out there. I can't get to it straight off. And if I hit this, it will start building another copy of me. And I don't know that this has enough power. You might need to build your generator pretty quick. Um, I'm not sure if it only has 10,000. I didn't look how much was in this one. It got started. But you're going to need to build another one. And if it's not done building another one, let me show you what happens. And this will be the end of my demonstration. Right now it says, and you notice down at the bottom left here, it says no environmental data. You might have to reset your game if you die. Sometimes it doesn't actually reset properly. Um, that's just one of the bugs of the game. But if you notice, we come out here and look, there is my gravestone. If I go and break that, all my supplies are there. So, you know, I can come out here, I can say, oh, look, that's okay. I made it. Nobody else is going to kill me. I should have seen that creeper that was going to kill me, but luckily I had an extra copy of myself. Now, you need to break this. There we go. All the stuff that you had on you is now back in your inventory and you are ready to go. Um, the environmental data thing is still broken, but I don't need to show you that because what I want to show you is that you... what happens if you do not have a fixed body ready? Oh, hey there! Are you friendly? I don't have my gun equipped yet, but I would bet you're friendly because, you know, we all know gas are friendly, right? Not so much so. Well, I'm gonna take him off anyways. Hey there! What you doing? Oh, apparently he is going to be friendly. 
Well, sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. Oh, look! A creeper! They're not dangerous! <laughs> now, you gotta remember there's special mobs here, too. So, if you went up to this special mob and you said, Oh, look! What is he? Now, here we go. Let's show you what happens if you do not have another constructor built. It says, you cannot respawn in hardcore mode. Delete world. Um, and it is over. Final. Done. It will delete your world as soon as you hit this. Now, I don't know if there's some way to save your world, but I wouldn't bother uh, trying to cheat the system that way. You could back up your save games if you know how to do that occasionally. If you didn't want to play, if you felt, found you were dying too much or something, you could do that. Make yourself an extra constructors or something, cheat them in. But the way this game works is, once you die, it is over and done with. So, delete your world. And, boom, you have died. Game over, man. It's game over. Uh, and you go back to the title screen. And you say... Single player, create new world. I don't care what I name my new world. You create a new world, and as soon as it's ready, loading, waiting, and boom, there you are. I have lost all my stuff. I'm back to square one. Um, I have to re-enable the HQM quests and the, turn off the mob griefing, and we are starting from scratch again. Um, if you don't get anything set up before you get your constructor set, you know what happens. Um, I'm feeling a little cool right now. Um, let's go heat up over here. Let me just show you real quick. See this gauge down here? This little black line is showing how hot you are where you're standing. Um, and this one is your actual heat. So, you know, if I walk away from something that's hot, the black bar is going to drop down a little. Um, I don't know if it actually will here. But if I get really close to this fire, you'll see it go up. See that? It went up so far, it disappeared. Yeah, see, it's way at the top now. If you get really close to the heat. And you know what? I just feel like this world was too rough. So I'm just going to finish heating up. And, you know, if you forget your constructor set and don't get that set up, well, you cannot respawn. Delete world. So, thanks for watching. This has been Pursuit. Uh, enjoy your playing of Crash Landing. Uh, don't try this at home. Uh, well, do try this at home, but don't try this at home. The pyrothium liquid is not for swimming in. Believe me. Bad news. Bad idea. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And bye-bye.